Hi guys, this is my channel about home brewing and today I want to talk to you about one of the key components into making great beers. All of you don't live like I do. Well, I don't have a big house, but I do have an outhouse, so I have room for a fermentation fridge. And uh, one of the uh, most important components into brewing a really great beer is to take control of your fermentation temperature, keeping it uh, steady and uh, have the means to uh, ramp up the temperature uh, to clean out your beer, giving your yeast an extra push in the end and so on. But what if you don't have the room for a fermentation fridge? Could it be done in another way? Of course it could! Uh, but uh, before we start talking about that, we need something to drink. I have an empty glass here as you see. Today we're gonna try out my Nemesis from TaylorMade Brewing. Look at the lovely uh, cap there and his label. So this is brewed by Friedrich of TaylorMade Brewing. I have had two beers of his before and uh, as usual he sent me uh, two beers of this one so I have another one to enjoy off camera. But enough said about that. Uh, I also have a recipe here. So this is a uh, Belgian Blonde at 7.2% ABV. He used 70% Pilsner, 24% Pale Ale, 2% Vienna, 2% Biscuit and 2% Abbey Yeast. And he used 150 grams of hops, Haltetour at uh, 60 minutes and Haltetour and Sass at 15 minutes. So it's quite a lot of hops there uh, for a Belgian blonde, I think. But let's get it into a glass. These were fermented at 26 degrees, so uh, I thought this beer uh, really should fit in the description of this video, the topic of the video. And this was brewed with Saft Brew BE256. Had an OG of 1070 and an FG of 1015. So let's get this one into a glass. Nice hiss there. And this is uh, forced card, bottled from the keg. So we should be fine letting everything in there. I do see some particles in there. So I'm gonna leave it behind anyway. So what we do we have here? We have a dark yellow colored beer. Not as dark as you see it in the camera as usual. Uh, not much of a head retention. We have maybe something there which looks like a head. It's not a tight. What is the opposite to a tight, a loose head? Uh, built up by larger bubbles. Uh, it's a good uh, level of carbonation in there. Looks good. Uh, maybe not the head, because it's gone already. Okay, let's give it a nose. Um, cheers, Frederick, and everyone, of course, for chiming in. Smells nice, um, smells a little bit yeasty, fruity, a bit malt sweetness there. Okay, let's dive in. Cheers guys. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit sweet, uh, bready. Yeasty. Maybe not yeasty in that way, but um, there's a lot of color from the yeast, a lot of flavor from the yeast. 
even better said. Very good mouthfeel. Just a little bit too sweet for my taste, but uh, otherwise a uh, great beer. It's ended at 10.15. It tastes a little bit sweeter. Uh, it might need some more bitterness because uh, I think it's a bit unbalanced. The sweetness is overpowering the beer a bit. So maybe uh, take it down a bit uh, or switch some of the malt for some sugars to dry it out or add more hops. Bittering hops, that is. But a uh, good tasting beer. Okay, so I wanted to talk to you today a little bit more about fermentation temperature. Uh, and an important thing when fermenting beer is to uh, measure your fermentation temperature and take control of the temperature. Uh, you must plan your fermentation temperature according to your brew, according to your yeast, according to what outcome you want. And one way to do that is to control it with a fermentation fridge where you can, tr can control uh, both cold and hot if you uh, put a heating element in there. But uh, as I said earlier, everyone can't uh, fit an extra fridge in uh, their living area. This is an idea that you might want to try out that I have been experimenting with with uh, great results. And uh, it is to ferment hot instead. Uh, and what do I mean with that? Well, you have to choose a yeast which ferments at higher temperature than your room temp. And then you can control the fermentation temperature just with heat. And uh, the way I have been doing this is that I have... Uh, placed a uh, insulation foam and my brew bucket on top and between the brew bucket and the insulation foam I have placed heating pads and this is heating pads uh, which you find in uh, the pet shop they come in different sizes I've been experimenting with them both and the smaller one I have uh, also placed on the stir plate and uh, my Emeyer flask on top and the stir bar have worked fine as well. Uh, maybe we should have a look at that. There are a lot of yeast strains that can be used for this. And uh, as I said, you want a yeast strain that works in a high temperature than your room temp. Uh, and your room temp will fluctuate a bit over the day. So you do want to have some marginals there. Uh, and uh, I will put a lot of yeast examples down below where you can pick from that but uh, maybe you want to go with a WLP 644 or uh, like a Belgian strain like we have here or uh, uh, maybe a wheat beer strain or something like that or a quike strain would be a good choice as well uh, but I like, say you have a room temperature of uh, 20 degrees Celsius something like that then you want to start a little bit higher than that, maybe around 23 Celsius or as much high as you want. But 
you want a little bit higher than your room temp and uh, you have to allow the G's to get even higher because you can only control with heat. Uh, so I built another controller, fermentation controller together and this is a STC1000 uh, which has a temperature probe and uh, just a heat and a cold side. You could use an ink bird or whatever you want. If uh, anyone wants to know how to build one of these together, I could make a video about that or if you want to know how to pr program this or whatever. I have this simple model in here, but in my real fermentation fridge I have the more advanced model, but this one works fine and uh, it ain't much expensive to put together. And uh, I only used uh, the heat side for this. So let's say you have a yeast that are recommended in the range of like 20 to 28, something like that. And you have a room temperature at 20. Let's start at something like 23 because you may have some fluctuation there at the day. So let's start at 23 degrees. So you set your controller at 23 degrees. You tape your probe on the outside of the fermenter vessel. And I, as I said, I had a foam sheet on, on the bottom. And then I had the heating pad and the bucket tape the probe to the outside of the fermenter, uh, which I insulated with a, with a pad insulation pad. Then I put a, a big plastic bag on top and two blankets and a plastic bag as well. So I had some insulation there, uh, but you can use whatever you have to insulate it. So let's say start at 23 uh, and uh, when the beer starts to ferment, it will heat up. And what you do then is you start chasing. So maybe you come back the next day and uh, your temperature are reading 24 degrees. Then you set your controller to 24 degrees. Then you come back about six hours later and you say, okay, now it's 24.4 degrees. Set your controller to 24.4 degrees and so on. And uh, when the beer aren't pushing the temperature up, you can push the temperature up yourself because you know you are at the end of fermentation. So you can keep on pushing the temp up for the beer to ferment out. And what I was thinking that could be a problem with the heating uh, pad under the uh, fermenter is that maybe that would give me some off flavors from the G standing on the heat. Maybe a heating belt would be better, something like that. Or if you built a box and control it that way, you can heat up the air instead. But building a box to put your fermenter in takes a little bit of the benefits away from this because this was about how to uh, control your temperature without having a big box like a fermentation fridge. But uh, I had none issues at all with the uh, off flavors from the yeast. You will see a uh, grain to glass or even two grain to glasses and more because I think this is a method I will adapt because I only have one fermentation fridge right now. When I clean out my shed, which I plan to do this summer, I will have the room for another fridge and then we can make some really cool experiments. But this is a way to do it without a fermentation fridge. I've also done this without um, temperature controller, but I do recommend it to get a temperature controller. It makes life more fun. If you don't have the room for a fermentation fridge, you could do it this way and still have control over your fermentation temperature. So I think that wraps it up. I have some footage for you, so let's check that out. I'm gonna 
tape the probe to the side here and insulate it with my special pad <laughs> made from uh, bubble wrap and uh, tape, silver tape as we call it in Sweden. Okay. Okay, the probe are taped on. This is the way I do it. So it's almost airtight. And then I tape the insulation over. The insulation is on place. Uh, 23.4 right now haven't set this yet gonna do it when I decide which temperature to start this up but, but uh, I think I'm gonna start it around somewhere there actually according to white labs this strain uh, has an optimal fermentation temperature between 21 C and 29 C so uh, quite a good span there and it's sitting now at 23 C so why don't start it at 23 C so there will be no heating at this stage so I think we're gonna wrap it up here thanks again Friedrich for sending me your Belgian blonde to try out so guys, if you found this interesting and uh, want to give it a shot, please let me know how it turns out and uh, your thoughts about it. If you want to send me beer mail like Friedrich did, you found my contact information down below. So, cheers guys and thanks for watching. Dr. Hans out.